running for us today, safety Khalil Barnes. He'll fire away the questions whenever you're ready. Khalil, obviously, that you know, getting back out on the road, going down to Miami, uh, big game. How much fun is it to now get to this part of the season where, you know, every game has some meaning to it. You know, it, it's it's all or nothing now. Uh, it's. It's cool because, you know, like, now we're kind of in the flow of things. We, this game is seven or something like that, so we're in the flow of things. It's not like early season where you still try to figure team out. We know who we are. We know what we got to do, and we know how to win when we do, like, what we do, like, when we don't win. So it's cool. Then coming off a of bye week, you know, we needed that, just kind of like a middle break. So, yeah, we definitely excited to be at this point of the season. More comfortable as Khalil Barnes now in game seven than he was in game one? Uh, A lot more confident. It's just, you know, like, Keep playing. The more snaps, the more you learn. Game experience is just like, like everybody said, like game experience means something, but it really does. Like just being out there slows down. So yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. I mean, um, you were one of the guys who practiced with the team at Miami last year, right? So I mean, how important was that? You know, couple weeks and kind of your getting kind of assimilated to college football where you are right now. Uh, I tell, like, me and Shelton came, well, that was right, like, really who I was with the whole time. So, like, we talk about all the time, like, that, just kind of understanding how the schedule was here and getting acclimated to all that, it was, like, big part of development because when we came back for spring, it was like we already know how the practices went, we knew what they expected, and uh, just a jump start kind of developing a relationship with the guys in the locker room, too. So, yeah, that was big. When we were talking to Wade Woodass, he was saying that you were playing some scout team receiver, I guess, during yeah. the um, how much, what do you remember about doing that? Uh, I remember it was really just kind of whatever, wherever they needed us. Like, there would be one day where we'd go and play scout team defense, and then, like, middle of this, like, it'd be like period six or something, we'd switch over, go play scout team offense. So, yeah, it, was, it felt like a little bit like high school. I was showing some receiver skills. Like, it was fun. It was fun. I think this secondary has answered a lot of questions that it faced coming into the season because after all the breakdowns and pass coverage last year, that was a big issue for y'all going into this year. I think uh, a lot of people, like you said, like assumed that the secondary was the kind of weak point of the defense, but I think we've shown this year we really don't have a weak point. Everybody's kind of stepped up, but again, like last year, it wasn't just that guys were uh, playing bad or just playing worse. It was they're banged up, so it's just completely different where you could play healthy, play confident, play fast. And they were deep. Like we have a lot of guys who can play a lot of positions, so that definitely helps. You played 41 snaps against Wake Forest. I mean, what is the adjustment been like going from a freshman who's playing a little bit to someone who's basically part of the core uh, of the defense? Uh, it hasn't been that big because I think I told – I forgot when I came in. Maybe it was like Charles Southern Week. But I told you, I like uh, the older safeties, they really kind of harp us on – like prepare like prepare like you're gonna start because again they're we're one play away from going from a third straight guy to a starter like you one injury away, so they like them and the coaches they really help us prepare so it really wasn't that big of a difference when you get out there because all week I've been preparing seeing the same thing they're seeing then I'm on the sideline talking to them when they come off the field so the way you go out there is just is basically like practice. Coach, when you talk about your recruiting process, a part of it was just you deciding for sure that you definitely wanted to be a safety, yeah. not a receiver. I mean, how torn were you between I would like to possibly play receiver and actually the safety might be? Uh, early, early on, I was like, I actually didn't know because I had trained receiver from like freshman year of high school to like junior year, and I had only like really trained DB with my trainer, Ken Whitehead, like just that senior season for real. So it was just like, I, I didn't know, but talked to my dad, talked to him too. Ken Whitehead is really who kind of drove me to play DB because he was like, you kind of know where you're at with receiver, but uh, he just said that he felt like my DB ceiling was going to be higher. So, yeah. Coach Collins sell it to you. He just, <laughs> he didn't really have to sell that, but it's just Clemson. Like, you know what you're going to get here. They're real people. And the whole recruit process, even before I had the offer, like, uh, he just kind of kept it real with me, was real transparent, and they just showed a lot of love. So. Any questions for Khalil from Zoom? Anybody else in the room? Yeah, Khalil, for the second.
secondary, just kind of watching you guys against Syracuse and Blake, it, it appears that this group lacked confidence last year, but now there's a certain swagger to the safeties in the corners. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, they, that's kind of one of the things Coach Woody Harp, though, he said he felt like we lost our swagger last year, you know, just kind of having a down game. And this year we, like, kind of established a whole mindset of the secondary, like, short-term memory. If we give up a catch, yeah, it sucks. We don't ever want to give up a catch, but, like, let it go, move to the next play. And we feel I, – I personally feel – I know everybody in that room feel like we go against the best receivers in the league every day at practice. So it's like we get out to the game, it's not, nothing that you haven't seen before. Like, we go against Tyler Brown. Antonio Williams, Troy Stilato, Adam Randall, Bo Collins. Like, there's not a lot of schools where they're getting those type of looks in practice. So when you get to the game, it's just like just like practice. There was a play against Wake where somebody knocked the pass down, and you turned and looked at the receiver and the quarterback and went, like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> you know, hey, don't throw it this way. What, what's it like when you go out there and, and kind of have that confidence that no matter what you do, we can shut you down? Well, that confidence comes from field study and practice. So it's, again, it's just all uh, goes back to square one. Like, today is a middle Monday. We'll go in, we'll watch some more tape. We just got through watching tape. We'll watch some more today. We'll go through the looks and practice. So all that stuff, like, once you come so confident in your preparation and you get out there, you just you fall back on your preparation. So. Now you're going up against the number one offense in, in the ACC, 501 yards a game. Tyler Van Dyke can throw it all over the yard. He's got speedy receivers. What's this challenge going to be like? Uh, it's a big challenge. Again, it's a game we get to play this week, but like uh, like you were saying, you know, we're at this point of the season. Every game, every game already mattered, but like we're in the deep part, so uh, we got to stick. We got to stick to it. Come off a of bye week, we can't come out slow just because we didn't play last week. It's going to be a challenge. Night game there, probably be rowdy, but we're we're up for it. We go prepare. We go do the same thing we've been doing. Oh, oh no, he, cause he's like good. Like, this is my first year here, so I don't know. But he's he's good. It's gonna be one of the best ones we've seen so far. Just the way he has so many weapons around him, so it's not like you could just focus on one receiver, cause he has all those guys. In it. The way like he made a play against North Carolina, he scrambled, and the guy came off the receiver for like half a second. And he just dumped it to him late, like stuff like that. That's a that's real talent. So we'll have to be all. Uh, all tail with him. Julio, so everybody wasn't healthy in the secondary against Wake. And, you know, you've gotten valuable experience. Saw how well Pride played against Wake. How good could a fully healthy Clemson secondary be you know, in the second half of the season? I think we could be as good as anyone in the country. Like, I think right now, even with like how we play early, I think we're still one of the best in the country, honestly. Uh, we got guys like Nate. I like Nate over any receiver in college football. We got shared on that other side. Then we have guys like, well, you have a guy like Toyota Pride, Sean Lewis, Jaden Lucas, who are like on the bench. It's not because those guys just aren't good. It's because like we just have those type of high caliber guys here. So I think we could be the best of the nation for sure. Talk about how it's still your first year, but you've been here since last December yeah. almost. Do you still feel like a freshman or do you feel different? Uh, Football wise, sometimes I feel like a freshman. Just some of the things like they've played against a lot of the guys multiple years. So when they talk about like first like the weight guy number two, they said like we've seen him like a lot like a lot. This is my first time playing against him, so I was just kinda new to it. But school wise, I would not feel like a freshman. It's it's kinda get hard. It's classes or I ain't messing with that. Coach kind of talked once about how beneficial it was from Akuba to have Nolan Turner in his freshman year and lean on him. How beneficial has it been for you to have Andrew and RJ and Jalen? What can you say about your relationship with those three guys? They're my guys. I played uh, Madden with – I got back yesterday at like 7. First thing I did was call Coops, and we actually played Madden. We played Madden for a little bit. But it's just uh, having all those guys. You know, I came into a room that was filled with a lot of vets, came in early. It was just me and Kyla Webb, who were the young guys. So they open, they helped me with open arms, taught me the defense. They never looked at it as like a, like he's coming. No one's trying to come and take your spot. We all try to get better, make each other better. Uh, I said it before. I think Makuba, RJ, and JP are like the reason. Like y'all 
think I'm just going out here a true freshman, doing all this by myself. I'm blessed, one, that I got those guys with me. Like, it's easy when you're in the game, and I, I can trust them, they can trust me. We doing everything we do, like just outside of practice hours, coming in together, watching tape, seeing what we see as a group. So uh, they've definitely helped me, and I'm glad. I didn't have to come in as just like the young cat with some young cats. Like I came in, I got my old guys with me. Uh, I think I played with the Bills yesterday. I think I played with the Bills and the Eagles, maybe I don't remember. But if he come in here, ask him what the score was to our game. That's it. Yeah. Anybody else for Khalil? All right, Thank you.